Watch you guys got another video on how to create your own custom Windows 10 image with all your applications installed inside that image. So when you install Windows 10, all of the applications will be installed with it. So first off, you're going to need to get yourself a Windows 10 ISO. You can download it from the Microsoft website using a media creation tool. Once you get this downloaded, just select the uh, ISO for download and it will allow you to download the ISO just like you see here. Click next and save it on your PC. Give it a name and this will download onto your PC. Once you've got this done, you're going to need a, a WinPE. Any sort of WinPE you will do. Uh, we're going to be using Hiren's uh, Boot CD PE. This is the WinPE version of uh, Hiren's Boot CD. But basically go to their website and you can download it here. It's already pre-made for you and we'll boot into this a little bit later on. I'll show you what we're going to be doing with it. But basically you'll need a WinPE of some kind. Then you're going to need to get yourself VirtualBox. VirtualBox is a piece of software which allows you to create virtual machines on your PC. It's free to download and this is what we're going to do. We're going to download the Windows version here and we'll get this installed on the PC. Now before we continue, let's have a quick word from today's sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 uh, Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description. Click on one of those and you'll be able to purchase yourself a Windows 10 Pro OEM key. Use my promo code capital B capital R 09. Apply this to your order and you will get a nice juicy discount. And this will bring the price right down. And once you've got this done, they will send you the, a code and you can use this to activate your version of Windows. OK, so let's go ahead and get VirtualBox installed on the system. Pretty straightforward stuff. So let's go next here and say yes to set up our network. And then we're going to go yes here. And then once we do this, it will say install. Click on install and it will install VirtualBox on your PC. With this done, we can then start to install Windows 10 onto our VirtualBox, which is going to allow us to create our image. And once this is complete, we can now start our virtual box up. So now we're going to start it up and this is what we've got here. So from here, it does look a bit daunting, but it is straightforward. All we need to do is click on new and now we can create our first virtual machine. We're going to call this Win 10. This is going to be Windows 10. Now we need to choose a folder where we want to install our virtual machine. Make sure you put it onto a drive that has plenty of space. So we're going to choose a secondary drive here. It's a mechanical drive that has quite a few terabytes. There we go. And you can give this a name and I'm just going to call this something like Win 10 or something like that. So let me go ahead and create a new folder and we can now go ahead and stick in a name here. We'll just call it VM Win 10, something like that. So I know there we go. Select the folder and all we need to do here now is select a ISO image. Now we do have our ISO. I'm going to go other and I've already downloaded it. It's in the download section. There we go choose windows.iso that's the one we downloaded and from here we can uh, also skip the unattended installation if we want to I'm going to leave that unchecked and then what we're going to do is a click on next here so from here we've now got some other settings we can do here we can do guest additions if we want to install guest additions here and it's going to use this one here and basically all we need to do next is leave this as is I don't really need to set up any of this sort of stuff so what I'm going to do is go next here and now we can choose our hardware this is our base memory so I'm just going to push this up to the green lines here and then we can click next and you can see here create a virtual hard disk now now we need to give this some size I'm going to give this 120 gigabytes because I have the space make sure you give it enough space for a partition that we're going to need now you can do pre-allocated full size or you can do some other settings here. I'm going to leave this as is and click finish. Once we've got this finished, you can see it's going to power this up and start uh, powering on. And it will start our installation of our Windows 10 onto this virtual machine. So this is what you can expect to see once it starts installing Windows 10. I'll skip forward a bit so you can get to the desktop and then we can continue on with what we need to do. Now, if you're not familiar with VirtualBox, you can always check some of my videos out. I've got other videos on how to install operating systems onto VirtualBox or on VMware Workstation or any of those. So we're going to skip to the desktop here. So now we're at the desktop. What you need to do now is we need to make sure that our guest editions is installed. And uh, we can check this up here. 
so you can see here we do have guest editions installed i'm just going to click on the top here and see just to make sure that it is by um checking it because we did put the check mark in so it should be installed by by the installation method so i'm going to quickly open this up and it should say guest editions there we go it's been a while since i've used virtualbox i use vmware workstation but you can see here it is installed on this image here so that's good okay so now we need to go to a browser and what we're going to do is we're going to download all the programs that we want to install on this uh, virtual machine and we want to obviously install all the programs that we want in our windows uh, 10 image so I'm going to go to the Google and type Nanite and you can download a bunch of programs here or you can download them manually, whichever way you want to go about doing it. But Nanite will have all of the programs for this image that I want. So we want Chrome here or Firefox or any of the other browsers that you want to use. VLC, Discord, there's a bunch of stuff here we can uh, download and get installed on the system very quickly. Also, you might want to uh, get all of the .NET frameworks. A lot of games will need these, so you can download these and uh, get these pre-installed. And then also we've got uh, Notepad++ there, a bunch of other stuff if you're interested. And again, you can always go to the website and download these uh, manu manually if you wish, but we're just using this for quickness. And once you're happy with your selection, you can go to the download section and choose the download and this will then allow us to download and install these all onto our uh, virtual machine. So let me go ahead and get a few more here sorted and then get your Nanite. There we go. And this will download it. And uh, basically all we need to do here is click on this and this will then start to install all of these applications one at a time. And this is sort of what really uh, see the end of slipstreaming uh, really. You don't really need to slipstream programs into ISOs anymore like we used to back in the day and this is why I don't make videos on it anymore but someone did request how to do it so I thought I'd make a quick video showing you how to do it if you still want to do it today. Now of course with adding programs to this installation the ISO file is going to be a lot bigger. The more programs you add the larger the ISO file will become. So let's just say a standard Windows ISO is around about say five gigabytes. You can end up with quite a quite a large ISO image, and you will need to obviously use this onto Ventoy or some sort of USB where you can install it from there. So I'm going to let these uh, download and install, and once this is done, we can move on to the next step, which is using SysPrep to prep the system ready for creating our image. Now SysPrep comes with Windows operating systems. It's built into the system so we can use this to prepare our uh, system uh, ready. And once we've done this uh, with SysPrep, we can then shut the PC down automatically. And then basically what we do from there is we're gonna use our WinPE to boot to that and then we're gonna copy the image over to a spare partition. I'll show you that in a second. And this is a pretty lengthy process. I don't want to skip any of these processes because it will confuse people and they will end up making loads of mistakes. Now the installation process is coming to an end and that's now completed so we can close this off and now what we need to do is I'm just going to quickly check our partition here to make sure this is ready so go to disk management by right clicking on the start button and this will open up our disk management panel and you can see here Windows has taken the whole 120 uh, gigabytes that I give it so I need to shrink this down and I'm going to quickly shrink this down by half so we can make this say uh, 60 uh, 60,000 that will do and then push shrink and it will take back 60,000 uh, you know space here which is nearly 60 gigabytes and then we we'll create a new simple volume here and uh, we'll leave that drive letter where it is that will do and what we can do is go next here and then give it a name if you want to. I'm just going to call this apps. You can call it wherever you like. It's just somewhere where we can, we can store our .win file. So that's now done. And uh, we can now move on to the next section. So I'm going to quickly close this off. And once this is done, we should be now prepped and ready to go. So let me just quickly format that disk. It's just come up with this box here. So just say yes here and it will format that disk 
for us or that partition. So now we're ready for sysprep really. So all we need to do is go to the location where sysprep is, which is in system 32. I can just quickly eject. I can see here guest additions here, and you can see the partition that we've got here already created. So let me just quickly eject guest additions here so we don't get confused. There we go. And uh, all we need to do now is go to our C drive. And once we go to our C drive, we can go to where sysprep is. So go windows, down to system 32 here there we go and we're going to come down a bit further to where we see sysprep and once you see sysprep here we can then click on it there it is right there double click and we can right click and run sysprep as administrator all we need to do here is leave this as enter system out of box experience and generalize and also shut down so we click ok and this will get things ready for us and uh, it's going to then shut down the system once this is completed and this will be ready for us to then copy that image so we need to shut this down and then we're going to boot into WinPE so we can then copy the image that we just uh, set up here so let me go ahead and let this finish off it does take a bit of time to get sysprep done so it's just processing here and once this is complete you'll see the the actual virtual machine shutting down automatically and once that's done, we can then boot to our uh, WinPE. Now, wherever you get your WinPE, it doesn't really matter. As long as you've got uh, access to a command prompt in that WinPE, we should be good to go. And uh, it doesn't have to be an all singing and dancing WinPE. It could just be just a standard WinPE version. So we're just going to let this finish off. OK, that is now been completed and it will start to shut down the PC. And once we get back to our main system, this is the main PC that is hosting VirtualBox. So you can see here, what we need to do now is get our ISO image for uh, WinPE and basically we're gonna boot to that. So let's go to the settings here. And then we're gonna go into storage and inside storage, you'll see uh, there is a empty slot here. So what we need to do is we're gonna go up to where it says live CD DVD and we're going to choose this little CD disk here, create, and we're going to choose our WinPE. So let's go ahead and add, and we can now add our WinPE. Wherever you've downloaded yours, just point to it, and then basically it is there. Once we've got this done, we can then uh, save this and boot to this. We will need to change the boot order in this uh, BIOS, so we need to tap F12 in VirtualBox. So push start, keep tapping F12, and it will take you to here where we can now choose C for CD-ROM. And then we're going to choose this and it will start booting up to our WinPE disk. And as you can see, it does take a bit of time. It is booting into memory. Just let it go. And uh, once we get this done, we will be able to use our command prompt to copy that image across. Now, yours might be different if you're using a different WinPE, it doesn't really matter. So now we're at the desktop. What we're going to do here is we're going to take a quick look at our drives here. So let's go ahead and go to this PC. And you can see these are our drives here. There's quite a lot of them here. So we've got our C drive, which is our Windows drive. And we've got our apps partition where we're going to copy our image over to. So let's right click on command prompt here and run this as administrator. And then we're going to type in our first command, which is DISM and then space dash H. This is for the help and it will tell us exactly what we can do here. So we're looking for uh, capture dash image, which captures an image of a drive in, into a new WIM file. So we're going to be able to use that command and that's what we're going to do. So let's just do here uh, DISM. Uh, space and we're going to do uh, forward slash capture dash image and then space dash h and this will give us the help information about capture dash image you can now see it gives us an example of what we need to do to be able to copy the image over to a new partition so let's go ahead and put this into practice and we can uh, copy this, this over so what we're going to do here is I'm going to change this to our C drive here. So I'm going to do C drive and then DISM space forward slash capture dash image just as it told us to do. 
and then space forward slash image and then we want to do file and then we want to do colon and then we what we want to do here is we need to give this a drive letter and this is going to be our partition where we're going to be sending our image it's going to be called install.wim and this is the name of the file so it's going to be in our d drive and it's going to be called install.wim now space forward slash and we're going to do capture and then from here dir as you see it on the screen and this is our directory and then we need to copy from our c drive which is our windows drive so we need to copy c drive and then we can now give this uh, a backslash and then space forward slash and then name give it a name and then we're going to give this a name we can call it whatever you like so i'm just going to call this a win 10 apps something like that and then we've got the option to compress this down if we want to if it's quite a large image you can compress this down i have made a mistake here i can see i've made a x instead of a c so this will kick an error up and don't worry what i'm going to do here is go back push the arrow keys up on the keyboard the cursor keys arrow push it up and it will give us that command back up there again and just go back and change that x to a c and this will be compress colon max and this will then deploy image servicing and management tool and start to image that drive for us and put it into our d drive which is that little partition we created which was 60 gigabytes now this will take a bit of time so be patient it does need to image the whole drive depending on how much data is on there and how many programs you've installed will determine how long this takes and how large the image is going to be so just bear that in mind try to keep it to a bare minimum if you're going to be using this sort of method to install it so inside our apps area here you can now see install.wim it's got zero bytes at the moment because it hasn't finished it's going to take some time so i'll go forward a little bit and once this is done we can then uh, have a look at it okay so that is now being completed and we can now go to this pc and we can take a look at the apps section here and you can see it's 5.87 gigabytes and that's because we compressed it down a little bit uh, to try and save a bit of space and if we open this up you can see it is the drive that we've just created with all our programs installed ready to go audacity 7-zip you can see them there google so this is the actual drive so what we need to do now is we need to copy this image over to our main system now you can't physically just drag and drop that over from a WinPE environment it won't allow you to do it let me just show you here so you can't do it like this so what we can do is attach a USB flash drive uh, to this here rather than boot up to that uh, drive again so what we can do here you can see there's no USB drive here I'm going to plug it in and then we can go to USB settings here and set this up so let me go ahead and uh, set this up so I'm going to go to USB settings here if the mouse will let me control it just going to plug the USB flash drive in and once this is done we'll be able to uh, set this up there we go so now we've got a window open and what we can do here is we can add just click on the plus and add in your USB flash drive click OK and this is now added our flash drive in now it obviously needs to be a fairly large flash drive uh, so we can copy that size over so i'm going to go into here and we should now see once we have a look here for the drive we need to go down to the bottom right hand side because it hasn't populated yet and we need to select it once we select it it will populate and it will probably say format disk or something like that if you've got other stuff on it i've got some linux stuff on here but there is a partition on here which is quite big which is good enough for me to copy it over to let me go ahead and now move this to the side and we can drag that image over like so and once this copies over we'll be ready to go so let me just quickly copy this over and speed this process up so i've now speeded this process up it should just end quickly here but it will take a bit of time to copy these files over and once it's done you should see 
the install.wim on the right hand side here as well which is on our USB flash drive which is plugged into our main computer so let's now shut down Hiram's boot CD PE we don't need that anymore and once we've got this file we can now use anyburn which is another free tool you can use so download this I'll leave the links in the video description and basically download anyburn for 64-bit operating systems which is a uh, Windows 10 so I'm going to download this open it up and what you need to do here is go to where it says image file image file is where we can now choose our Windows ISO now this is the Windows ISO which you downloaded from Microsoft it will be wherever you put it it's called, called windows.iso it's the one from Microsoft it's not got our programs in here yet we're going to add those in so now we've got that selected click next from here we need to go into sources inside sources you will see your files which we need to delete so we can put our files in place of it so inside here let's pull this down a little bit further we don't want to disturb the boot.wim it's not that one we want the install.wim or install.esd that is the file that you need okay and there it is right there install.esd we can now highlight this one and go up to the top menu where it says add remove properties click on remove and delete that file now click add and now we can add our install.wim which we uh, just created so let's go ahead and find where we put that so it's on our usb flash drive you can drag it off and put it on your desktop if you want to it will be a bit quicker transfer data wise so we're just going to add it from the usb flash drive and then once we've got this done that is replace that file with your one which will have all your applications on it so once we've got this we can now click next and we can now create our uh, our ISO image so we're not going to call it windows.iso we're going to call this say windows 10 apps something like that and then we can now just go create now and this will go off and then start creating your new ISO image with all of your uh, programs in there you can see adding install.wim to that ISO image it's, it's that simple now because it's dragging it across from the USB flash drive it will be a bit slower if this was on my PC it will be a lot quicker but that's now been completed and you've just created your custom windows 10 iso with all your applications in it so when you go to install that onto any machine it will install all of your uh, applications that you installed on your iso and you can see it just here so you can create a bootable usb flash drive or you can use ventoy or whatever it is you want to use to install your iso and you can see the size difference is 6.8 gigabytes in size for the Windows 10 apps ISO that we just created compared to uh, the actual uh, Windows ISO, which is 4.6. Now, again, remember, WIM files are larger than the ESD files. The, the ESD files are more compressed, so you are going to end up with a larger. You can obviously compress that back down to ESD from WIM if you want to. That's another video altogether. I've made videos on that many years ago but anyway I think that's going to be about it for this video that's how you can create your own custom Windows 10 ISOs with all your applications in there my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk quick shout out to all my YouTube members I really do appreciate the support I shall catch you on the discord server for a chat and also a special shout out goes to RTX Brody Edward Kelly Albert Hewson, Ron Hicks, Celtic Lad, PC Repair Tech, Vitality, Phil's Computer Repair, Big Daddy, Gary Belts, Mike Bigness, Jedi Buddhist, Geo Sam, and Welsh Tony. Thanks for the support, guys. I really do appreciate it, and I'll sure see you in the next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.